identify there. In my previous recording on what is a database and DBMS, we understood the database definition and how DBMS and database are related to each other. In this recording, we are talking about what is a relational database and RDBMS. If we want to understand what is a relational database, we have to go back to 1970s. Prior to 1970s, if you would like to design a new database, there are three major data models. Maybe you, you can uh, just use a flat files to store your database, or you can depend upon hierarchical um, data model, or you can depend on network data model. But in 1970, uh, a researcher named E.F. Cord published a revolutionary paper on a new database model called relational model. This is the most revolutionary, one of the most revolutionary papers in the database industry. Even after 40 years, still relational model is a de facto standard for database design. This paper mainly talks about database independence, data independence, which is actually lacking in these three models. And this model majorly talks about storing the data in the form of tables, rows and columns, putting uh, constraints, keeping the data normalized. If you design your database using EF Quartz relational model in the form of tables, columns, rows, primary keys, foreign keys, normalized standards, then your database is called a relational database. Relational database. If you have a software sitting on top of a relational database, then software is nothing but RDBMS. We learned about DBMS in my previous recording. This is just an extension to it. It's RDBMS. Despite being so popular, still there are some critics who criticized relational database uh, inability to serve non-business applications. That is more towards object-oriented approaches. So hence, there was a new model came into the industry called object relational model. Here is a quick definition of it. An object relational database management system is nothing but or an object relational database is nothing but a relational database plus object oriented features. Object oriented features such as uh, you have a facility to flexibility to define new data types, user defined types, inheritance and polymorphism, such object oriented features. For, for various reasons, however, this object relational database model is not so successful. Taking that as an opportunity, these RDBMS systems itself started including these various object oriented features as part of RDBMS itself. Why should we need a new ORDBMS when I can include the same features as part of RDBMS? If you take some of the industry major databases such as Oracle or DB2, SQL Server, or open source PostgreSQL, they are all RDBMS systems which also offer you ORDBMS features. summary so far we so far understood what is a database this is a, this is just a hard disk the one which sits on top of it is a dbms if a database model is designed using ef cards relational paper then it's a relational database the one which sits on top of this is called rdbms object relational database then it's a ordbms now, if I take you back to my first slide, this terminology is no longer a strange terminology. Now, you know what is a database. Now, you know what is a DBMS, what is a relational database, 
and RDBMS, object relational database, and you have a ORDBMS. In my next video, I will talk about how various different database vendors came into the existence after EF Quartz base paper, how industry got separated into two different tracks and how Oracle or Ingress or Sybase or DB2, how these databases evolved from this EF Quartz base paper and how that gave birth to a SQL or an SQL. That's what we do as part of an next recording. Thank you again for watching this video. Uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Looking forward to see you in the next recording. Thank you.